Okay, so today we're going to do some power over Ethernet, which should not be that bad of a thing and should not really be a big of a deal. I know it's sometimes depending who you ask, they're going to say this and that. I'm going to go the easy route. You can buy you can buy adapters, by the way, for this uh, purpose. You, you can buy either one of these or the other ones, and but we're not going to do it today. We're going to take as example, you have, let's say, an uh, IP camera that requires power of e over Ethernet right here. As you see, it doesn't have any other kind of input or output except for the Ethernet. And let's say you have one of these uh, APs, access points. This is just a reset pinhole and it's powered via Ethernet as well. But this one is 24 volts and I don't happen to, 20 to have a 24 volt right here. I have a 12 volt adapter that we're going to insert on this camera by this cable and make it work that way so without wasting time let's put this on the side because we're gonna get to that and oh yes instead of stripping the cable which you could do as well cut the cable here and connect it directly to those cables i'm gonna tell you in a second i'm gonna use this old barrel from an older laptop and just cut the barrel and connect it so i can detach it but that's up to you that's optional that's nothing uh, that i need to worry about and the incision the cutting I'm going to do on the side, that would go near my router to pl be plugged in the router. So it's easier to plug the power adapter nearby there and just go with this cable than towards the camera. This is going to be just for a short one, so I'm not worried about that part. In any case, let's go and open the cable just a little bit. Now, it would be great if you had the uh, network crimpers. I have mine somewhere, but that's somewhere is somewhere that i don't know so i'm gonna open it this way and i suggest you don't do it this way because you risk of cutting the uh, wires inside if you haven't done this before and well if you haven't done this before actually it's not gonna be that easy to get kind of accustomed with doing it right away so you would require a few trials before it and i suggest you get a broken cable Ethernet cable, you know, the tiny ones that come with your routers and other devices. So, yeah, if you mess up a few of those, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anyone. Okay, the cable is now cut here. And I'm just going to open it through a little bit. So, in reality, we only need two of these pairs. Now, you have a few pairs here. They're all in this twisty motion thing. The data and the power. So, now for the power... If your cable that you're trying to mod follows any kind of standards, it should have exactly the same colors as mine, if it has standards. So here we have these cables, but we are going to only work with this one that's white and blue, as you see right there. White and blue is going to be our positive, and brown and white is going to be our negative. And don't cut them on this side, because this is the side that goes from here to our router. As you see, we don't have anything to do with that. So we will cut it on this side, because then the from the router we get only the network so part of it, but the power we are delivering from here then to the camera or the network, wherever, whatever that you're using. Let me just cut them a little bit here, because I'm going to insulate them so we don't have a poo-poo on them later on, just to make sure we are on the 100% safe side. We get a piece of electrical tape. This should not be a big deal. Okay, so they're insulated now. Now our entire job is going to be with these two right here. As you see, the blue and white is going to be our positive, And the white and brown is going to be our negative. Just untwist, but don't mix them up. Do not mix them up. Even though it's not going to be easy to mix them up. Again, if your wires, if your Ethernet cable follows standard because the white wire has a small line throughout it that says where it belongs or which wire it belongs to as you see the white wire there has some blue line that goes with the blue and the white wire on this side has some kind of brown line that goes with the brown so that's quite easy to follow i'm just gonna strip them naked and give them dollar bills by 12 volt each okay and at this point after you strip them you just uh, have to couple them together. Okay, so 
the two brown ones that will be our uh negative and the two blue ones that will be our positive and we should be really good to go at this point but before i do any of that i'm gonna test it this is just power it doesn't deliver data i'm gonna test if we really have 12 volts here before we go anywhere so let me plug this one in okay <coughs> So, this is plugged in here, and this would be plugged in right here. And now let me just test them really quick. Preferably you don't want to touch them with your hands, but... Okay, 12.5, that's perfect. That's what I'm looking for. The power delivery is happening, so we are on a good track now. Okay, so, let me unplug it from here so we don't have any problems. And now comes time for this uh, laptop barrel and uh, fortunately enough this barrel fits just perfect on this one right here so that's the perfect candidate so i don't destroy this wire this is for demonstration purposes only anyway so i'm not sure if i ever intend to use this camera for my own home because i have too many cameras around the house already and i really would not have any idea where i would put an extra one okay let me just strip these real quick now this laptop barrel, as I said, I'm just putting it because I had it, but it's not needed. You can just cut this wire here, positive to positive, negative to negative, and it's very easy to tell. Positive on these barrels has this line right through it, and the negative obviously is the other side. So, but I'm doing it because I have the barrel, not because it's needed. Okay, so now we will install this appropriately just as such negative to negative and positive to positive and the measurement time is here so let me get this one here after it's connected negative to negative and positive to positive and we have 12.5 that we're looking for and the beauty of it is that i like to use these uh, ex uh adapters Ah, so I can leave one in there the whole time and I can use a standard barrel here So it doesn't need to be only this tiny thing inside and in my opinion, this is so far so good Let me put it in here and let's now just wrap it up and plug in the camera I guess that's all we can do. So Let me just make sure these are insulated and taken care for because we don't want any problems later on and if you don't know what you're doing for example and you are very unfamiliar with networking and electronics and cables and all that i suggest you just call someone that knows what they're doing and maybe they'll do something for you because sometimes doing this power over ethernet you can fry things telling you right now you plug it on the wrong device that does not take power over ethernet that device you have to say bye bye it's 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 a fact of life that you don't do and sometimes let's say this device here for example this ubiquity uh this one requires 24 volts well let's say i built a 24 volts power over ethernet and then i forget i put this on the side and they have the same barrels, the sizes here. And boom, I go plug this camera here. But this camera only takes 12 volts, so I'm putting double the voltage here. Most of the time, it's gonna start cooking. So, you gotta be really careful doing these things. And by the way, no, I am not responsible. If you fry something at your own leisure, you might be responsible for it and not me. I'm doing it because I can afford to lose what I'm doing right now, these cameras and these things, and I can experiment with them. But if you cannot afford to lose what you're experimenting with, and you are not familiar with electricity and electronics, I suggest you do not do this experiment, because a lot of times it can go wrong. So just be careful out there. I'm not saying these words to actually scare you and make you not do it and all that, because obviously I wouldn't even be doing this video if that was the case. I just want to give you a fair warning, not make it all just a field of daisies and beauties and all that, and then in the end you, you fry something you can't afford to replace, and then you come at me, oh, but you told me I did not tell you. I'm making it for myself, and if you know what I'm doing, and you know how to follow it properly, and you understand how electricity works and how electronics work, 
then yes, you are very welcome to follow this video. But otherwise, don't forget, you are taking risks. Okay, I think now we are done with this. Looks Frankenstein enough because I just wanted to cover it. Okay, and now our power over Ethernet should be ready to go. Let me plug this in right here. Now it should be powered from this way towards this way, by the way, because this one goes to the router remember how we said that and this long way now goes to the camera but we happen to have the camera right here so let's plug it in and see if it turns on it should but we never know and as you see the lights are on now i think the camera here is capturing it yes it is on the green light is on and let's wait for it to start it should start blinking when it uh gets into work or in uh, work mode I should say. Just give it a second. Okay, and as you see now, the camera is fully initiated. And at this point, you are done. You can just plug it to your router, set it up in this camera case, for example. This is the, uh, what they call this, eye camera, I think. Yep, eye camera 1000 is this one here. This one requires to be connected at the first time with the router, so you can get the IP for it. And then you can move it around the house. I'm not sure if they even sell this anymore. It's quite old, but it was good enough for me to experiment with it and show you what's uh, possible. And pretty much that's all of it, really. There's not much more to it. Now we have a power over Ethernet Frankenstein wire that we can plug and unplug here at any time we want. And with that said, I hope you learned something. And keep in mind what we said. The blue and white wire is your positive. The brown and white wire is your negative. That is all the wires you need to cut. Leave the other wires alone. If your cable does not have those, uh, the coating of that wire is easy to see it right here. If you are in doubt, just take the uh, other side of the ethernet right here. And you can see all the colors through this see-through uh, plastic. So that's how you can tell if it's really uh, having the same order of uh, color. And again, with that said, I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're going to hit that like and subscribe. It helps tremendously and we will see you next time. Bye.